Yo, 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 this is DJ Justin. Thank you for tuning in UOP's live podcast. Today we have our psych ma- major, Miss Melanie, interviewing my man, the one, the only, Abraham Maslow. <laughs> I'm here interviewing Mr. Abraham Maslow on his holistic dynamic theory. Hello, Mr. Maslow. Can you enlighten us with some of the main tenets of your theory and how they affect behavior? I believe people are motivated by four dimensions of needs. Cognitive, willful striving. Aesthetic, the need for order and beauty. Cognitive, the need for curiosity and knowledge. And neurotic, an unproductive pattern of relating to other people. Now, the cognitive needs can be arranged on a hierarchy, meaning that one need must be relatively satisfied before the next need can become active. The five cognitive needs are physiological, safety, love, and belongingness, esteem, and self-actualization. Occasionally, needs on the hierarchy can be reversed, and they are frequently unconscious when this occurs. Coping behavior is motivated and is directed toward the satisfaction of basic needs. Once a person accepts their B values, which are truth, beauty, humor, which is what separates self-actualizing people from those who are merely healthy but mired on the level of esteem, and these characteristics of self-actualizers include a more efficient perception of reality, acceptance of self, others, and nature, spontaneity, simplicity, and naturalness, a problem-centered approach to life, the need of privacy, autonomy, freshness of appreciation, peak experiences, social interest, profound interpersonal relations, a democratic attitude, the ability to discriminate means from ends, a philosophical sense of humor, creativeness, and a resistance to enculturation. Maslow, can you provide an example of a situation that demonstrates the relationship between the theory and the behavior? that people are continually motivated by one or more needs and that under the proper circumstances they can reach a level of psychological health called self-actualization. Take Pavlov's experiment with repeated occurrences of a dog and salivating when the bell is rang. The dog had learned an association between the bell and the food. In this case, a new behavior has been learned. Because this response was learned, or conditioned, it is called a conditioned response, the neutral stimulus has become a conditioned stimulus. So what you're saying is, Pavlov found that for associations to be made, the two stimuli had to be presented close together in time. Self-actualization of need, which is the food, and salivation, and the ringing of the bell was the response. He called this the law of temporal contiguity. If the time between the conditioned stimulus, which is the bell, and unconditioned stimulus, which is the food, is too great, then learning will not occur. In regards to a different learning or no occurrence of learning, when it comes to your theory, regardless of what is and what is not learned, self-actualization would still take place. So with that being said, Mr. Maslow, can you emphasize more on the strengths and limitations of your theory? Sure. Some of the main tenets of my theory still have a strong foundation in many current views of psychology, as well as positive advancements in both educational and industrial psychology. Additionally, it provides a useful summary of human needs. Um, Some of the limitations could be viewed as it cannot be tested empirically, that is, there isn't a way to measure precisely how satisfied one level of need must be before the next higher need becomes operative. And it doesn't account for social or cultural differences between individuals. Wow, that was amazing. I definitely want to thank you, Mr. Maslow, for taking the time on enlightening us on your holistic dynamic theory. I've been following your work for quite some time now, and your hierarchy of needs, ranging from basic needs to self-actualization, has definitely impacted my studies on overall growth and human motivation. I can't thank you enough. Thanks for coming to the studio and letting me interview you. The pleasure was all mine. Thanks.